Oh. Adam Rittenberg, Tony Petiti, Big Ten wants more games with college football playoff implications. Of course, there has been the discussion, the advisory board with the SEC. We've heard Greg Sankey, among others. Adam joins us before he takes a flight on 365 Sports. Adam, thank you very much. When I read your article, although I'm sure there are some that are leery about anything that have said uh, because of what's happened in college football recently, did you get more of a, a flavor that Tony Petiti was truly trying to do what's best for his conference or what's best for college football? Yeah, it's a great question, Smokey. I mean, it's it's really uh, trying to address both. I mean, he, you know, he told me, listen, all of our jobs as commissioners are to do what's best for our conference. Like, let's make that very, very clear. But in talking with him about the SEC, you know, whatever you're going to call it, uh, group or alum, they're not going to say alliance, but, um, you know, they, they do, at least publicly, say that they want to address things that can, you know, not just affect the Big Ten and the SEC, but all of these other leagues. In, in the context of the playoff and you know, the, the kind of future, future model of how that's going to evolve in the next contract, I, I do think that Tony and you know, probably Greg Sankey as well want a model that's going to reward conferences with tremendous depth. And they believe they have uh, both leagues have great depth and they want to have a lot of games, not just Ohio State, Michigan, but a lot of games down the stretch that have those playoff implications. You know, Tony brought up to me, you know, like you know, the, one of the conferences in the, in the NFL, if you're an AFC or NFC team fan, you know, that's 16 team conferences that might have seven or eight teams that have a legitimate chance to make the playoff down the stretch. That's the goal. If you're the big 10 or the SEC, I don't know if that's realistic if you're outside of those two conferences. Adam, um, one of the things, like he's a TV executive, and TV executives yep. make TV decisions, and this is clearly a better one. Also, though, when it comes down to a college football playoff committee, quite often there's a lot of, of recency bias that goes in with it. I'll just, by comparison, use Florida State and LSU this year. By the time it got to the end of the year, Florida State's drubbing of LSU and the Heiser Trophy winner to the best offense didn't matter as much as certain other things that happened because it was the first game of the season. If you start moving those more important games to the end, and even though you might have a murderer's row, doesn't that create a little bit of like, oh, well, just recently, you know, Purdue just upset Michigan. That's a bigger deal than what could have happened in September 1st or 2nd. Right. Yeah. I mean, the committee is always going to say that, that games are evaluated equally, but injuries are a factor. Other things are a factor uh, down the stretch. And, you know, I think one thing that Tony talked to me about was I can tell the difference between team one and team 15. But how do you really tell the difference between team 12 and team 15? Like he really wants that spelled out in, in a clearer way, if that's even possible from the committee in terms of how many wins or other factors that are really going to make the difference. Uh, you know, kind of at the, the the new margin. The new margin isn't four or five. It's going to be twelve, thirteen. And you know, with the conference championships being part of it, it's really going to be these at-large teams. You know, probably from the Big Ten or the SEC or some of the other power conferences that are going to be debated with all these uh, uh, data points, the, all these all these factors. You're going into who makes it and who and who's left out. You know, uh, of the five seven model that most likely is voted in uh, next week and will be voted in before too long. Uh, do, who do you think is it? Is it the seven at large teams? How would you think off the top of your head, Adam, might be split up between the SEC and the Big Ten? And I know that there's some years it might fluctuate. Yeah, I think it's going to fluctuate. I mean, you look at this coming season. And I, you know, I think the SEC has tremendous potential depth. Now, you do have one of your powerhouses in Alabama that's going through quite a lot of transition. I, I spoke to someone in that building today, and, and, and it's been a bit of a whirlwind uh, in Tuscaloosa. But are they a team that's capable of making a 12-team playoff? Absolutely. You know, Georgia, clearly, uh, if they don't make a 12-team playoff, it's going to be a massive disappointment. You look at what Ole Miss has coming back, what Missouri has coming back. Um, you know, Tennessee has been you know, in that conversation. So I think they're going to have a chance to, to gobble up quite a few of those spots. But then you look at the Big Ten and Ohio State and Oregon certainly are teams that look like they can make the 12 team playoff and would be very disappointed if they didn't. Penn State, I think they should be disappointed if they don't make the, 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 the playoff. And then we'll see about Michigan, the, the defending national champions who are going through you know, quite, quite a lot of turnover, both coaching and roster from the team that, that played that won a title back on January 8th. 
Adam, um, and maybe this is just the conspiratorial part of me, um, when you, you said earlier that Tony Petiti and Greg Sankey are, are trying to work to make everything better for college football, part of me believes that. But part of yeah. me believes that not having the other voices in the room also enables them to have the plan B where they get to or you know what phase two is when we no longer need the ACC and Big 12 anymore. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and again, I asked Tony that. I mean, I, I think I said, listen, you, you, you understand that there's not a whole lot of trust out there, uh, given what's happened the last three summers with, with, uh, with you know, the SEC taking out Texas and Oklahoma and then the Big Ten you know, twice taking a bite out of the Pac-12, and the Big 12 obviously did that as well. But, um, you know, I, I think that there's a sense that uh, you know, he, he, he and Greg just felt that, that, you know, they're at a point, given how much they're communicating, that it, with all the other things that are going on, all the challenges facing the enterprise of college sports, that they need to create something formally to have that level of communication. Now, how they communicate with the other conferences and what those conferences believe, what they hear from the Big Ten SEC group is going to be very interesting. And everyone's saying, like, okay, there's, there's tons of lines of communication that are still open, and we're always talking to the other commissioners, and we're always in communication with the other conferences. But if I'm not in one of those two leagues, I don't know if I trust everything that, that, they're, that, that, that they're telling me because look at what the actions have shown here the last three summers. He, he made a comment at the end of your article that I thought, that, like, this is a, you could do this across America. People sometimes misconstrue, misconstrue. These are never personal things. This is not personal. So it, 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 but I think everybody seems like today, not everybody, but a lot of people do take anything that they don't like as personal. Is that what he's talking about? Yeah. So that comment, Smokey, was in regards to Michigan because I asked him, like, listen, how's your relationship with Michigan? Because uh, we know what happened last year uh, with the, the, the Big Ten penalties for Michigan, which Jim Harbaugh served with that suspension. We saw the blistering statement from Ward Manuel, who almost never weighs in on anything, uh, <laughs> coming right after the Big Ten and, and, and their process. And now he didn't mention Tony in the statement, but Tony was the one that, that gave the, the, the suspension for Harbaugh. So. Uh, you know, again, what, what his point is, is that, you know, people are going to get angry because of our decisions. I get that, uh, but it's never personal. And, you know, he, he, he says that he and Ward Manuel have had a, a, a strong working relationship since that point. But it does apply to all of these things. And I, there's certainly a lot of you know, hurt feelings and anger and all sorts of emotions that go on because of how big these, these decisions are, especially in realignment. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, at least from, from the commissioner's standpoint, it, you know, he, he doesn't look at these things as a personal attack on anyone or any school. Does Jim Harbaugh being gone um, in the NFL help that uh, relationship heal maybe a little bit quicker than if they had to navigate it for another couple of seasons with Jim Harbaugh being there, regardless of whatever penalties Michigan may or may not get from whoever in the coming months or years, but that Jim Harbaugh is not going to be there to have to deal with. Does that make it easier? Well, I think so, especially because of the Harbaugh NCAA relationship, which had, had, had obviously had its struggles here over the last few years with some of the uh, uh, you know, investigations and other things that have gone on. I, I think the NCAA is very happy that Jim Harbaugh is not there. Um, you know, is the Big Ten happy? You know, certainly Jim Harbaugh helped the league. He won the first national title for this conference in almost a decade in the final year of the 14th system. But I, I think overall, you're right. He's a very strong personality. He's a guy that's not going to back down. And with him no longer there and a first-time head coach, I think it, it, it's one less thing that Tony Petiti has to worry about. One, one more thing, Adam, and thanks for your time. Sankey seems to be someone, there have been even those who have compared him to like Scott Boris when it comes to baseball agents and players. Sankey seems to be more of the hammer and is not afraid to say it. Is Petiti a different personality? Um, I, I think to a degree. I, I think Jim Delaney was more like what you're describing with, with Greg Sankey. And he'd obviously been around college athletics for a long, long time. Now, Tony has two. You know, he was a TV executive. He was on that side of it, you know, doing deals and creating games. And he comes from that background. Uh, and, and so I, I don't think he's necessarily somebody who, you know, every, everything is a soundbite. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, Greg Sankey's Sesame Street comments are almost laughable now. Remember those? going into yep. uh, uh, the selection day. So it's not always great to, you know, have that type of leadership style. I'm, Greg's obviously very bright and he's gotten very far and he has a lot of influence. I, I would say, though, to your question, Tony has a, a, a little bit more of a reserved style, but he's not afraid to 
stand up for his league, which is obviously very important. Yesterday, there was a story about how your mark and even Phillips are perceiving what's going on. Your mark said he took it as benign. But, uh, uh, Phillips, who shouldn't trust anybody after the alliance or even the college football playoff, said he kind of still trusts these guys. Should they trust him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think again, like, like, what else is there to take? I mean, now we know the ACC situation is what it is with Florida State and those other members who certainly would be desirable if they're no longer part of the ACC. Jim Phillips is not naive; he knows that both the SEC and the Big Ten would be interested if Florida State and North Carolina and some of those other schools are are available. Now, are they going to? I, I do think that the, 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 the group of the commissioners works pretty well together, mm -hmm. especially at, you know now, now that Kevin Warren's gone, George Klyovkov is gone. Um, you know uh, who's going to be in that room. But again, I, I think you have to look at the actions as well and certainly protect yourself as much as possible if you're your Mark or Philip. Thank you, Adam. I know you got to go. Appreciate it. Good luck with your flight. Be safe. We'll talk to you again soon. Adam Rittenberg with us from ESPN.com. Craig, you're the